Hi, my name is Dr. Rich Hilsden, and you're watching my channel, Knife Skills. I'm not in my office today, I'm actually traveling for a medical conference, which is exciting. It's the first time I've had a chance to do that in a long time, and maybe I'll share a little bit more on a future episode about really what we get out of medical conferences and why they're valuable for us as medical professionals. Today I want to talk about something a little different. I want to talk about fainting in the OR. Before I went on this trip, I had an operating room where I had an opportunity to teach a medical student, which is a big part of what I do and a big part of why I'm here on YouTube and why I like to share. Uh, I'm an educator at heart. And the medical student was working with us at the table, doing a great job, and then told me that she was about to faint. We recognized that as an important situation, helped her get away from the table, she took a seat, everything was fine. We were able to switch her out with another operating room participant to you know, help out with the case, and, uh, and all was good. But when I talked to her after, I really made me think, you know, this is a great topic to discuss because first of all, it's super common. And secondly, people sometimes are a little afraid to be in the operating room environment because they might feel queasy, or they might be afraid to even pursue medicine as a career because they have this tendency to faint with the sight of blood or something like that. But the reality is, is that is a, an experience that can be trained away or habituated away. So it shouldn't be something that you're afraid of, but also it's super common. We in the opera room were totally prepared for the situation. We've had the situation before and we knew really what to do. And so I think the medical student did some great things. And so if you're someone who's a medical student who's a little bit worried about that, worried about fainting in the operating room, or maybe someone who's a nursing student, or whatever role you might be, uh, and you're concerned about the possibility of fainting or passing out in the operating room, I do have some tips for you. So the first one is exactly what this medical student did. Communicate. Communicate with the OR team that you're having a little bit of a problem. We're prepared for this to allow us to sub you out with someone else with another role and put you in a safe position. So that's tip number one, communicate so we can react. The second one is when you step away from the table, don't try to move quickly, move slowly and maybe get into a slight squatting position. Just trying to lower yourself to the ground slightly. You don't want to make contact with the ground, but the point is, is that if you do fall, you're gonna fall from a shorter distance but also lowering yourself down to the ground can increase that venous return. The muscles as they contract when you, when you lower your body down will improve blood flow, at least temporarily, back to the heart, which might abort a single episode. So that's something to help out as well. The other thing that's really important is to make sure you're physically prepared for the operating room. So avoid dehydration, make sure you've eaten properly, avoid low blood sugar, avoid those types of triggers, which I think is a pretty simple thing that you can do. Make sure you're going into the operating room in the best condition that you possibly can. And the fourth and final tip that I have, that is keep at it. So in this case, the medical student nearly passed out. We did all the things I mentioned before and I had her take a quick break. We had a full other day of operating room, I had a number of other cases, she had an opportunity to help out, and I really encouraged her to come back in the operating room and get to the table again, because I knew that with a bit more experience at the table, she was gonna feel better. So get back into it. There are many stories of doctors, surgeons, nurses, who have, through exposure and experience, seeing these nausea and seeing these experiences that put them at risk of fainting. Many people have gone through those and, and been able to completely eliminate these fainting episodes just from more experience. So I wanna encourage you to get back at the table. Now, for the second part, I wanna talk a little bit about why it happens and what we're talking about. So fainting in the medical world, we use the term syncope and we divide it up between pre-syncope and full-on syncope. So when somebody feels like they're gonna faint or they're 
uh, they say, I'm about to pass out, but don't actually do that. We call that presyncope. And if they lose some, some type of consciousness, they, they actually uh, faint or pass out, we call that syncope. And the type of syncope that's happening in the operating room is something known as vasovagal syncope or neurocardiogenic syncope. And what's happening there is that these receptors in the carotid bodies or the carotid sinuses that actually sense the amount of blood pressure and send signals up to the brain. And very often when there's a stressful situation or an exciting situation or something that makes you feel a little uncomfortable, there'll be an abrupt change in your blood pressure. And that'll be sensed there. And a reflux will be triggered in the brain, which causes your heart rate to slow down, which will cause your blood vessels to dilate, will cause various other uh, chemical reactions in your body and you start to pass out and faint. It's a completely normal response. And people will oftentimes have had it previous times in their life, and they'll know this is something that could happen if they're exposed to a certain stimulation. So that is this classic story of neurogenic or uh, vasovagal syncope. My final story I wanna tell you is that when I was interested in going to medical school, I encountered a cardiac surgeon who told me that on the very first time he was operating as a resident, he was maybe a junior resident, and had the responsibility of cutting skin. He put the blade down and cut the patient and immediately had a syncopal episode. And that particular uh, cardiac surgeon overcame that and became a well-respected, well-known cardiac surgeon in his community. Me personally, even though I'm a general surgeon and a trauma surgeon, I get exposed to all kinds of nausea inducing things all the time. There are little triggers in my own career that actually cause me to feel unwell or make me feel maybe a gag reflux or something similar. I have a physiologic response to something that I'm seeing. And I'll tell you what that is. I'm gonna be vulnerable here and share something. I know my colleagues are gonna be watching this video and, and I hate to um, you know, show a bit of vulnerability here, but the, the one thing that drives me crazy or I struggle with from time to time is working with cadavers. When I was on pre-med, I did a full human cadaver course, head to toe dissection, I loved it. But when I first started, I did find a little bit of nausea when I was first working with the cold flesh of a cadaver. Now, over the course of that year, I had more experience, I developed confidence, I, I stopped worrying or feeling uh, any physical response to working with a cadaver at all. But now that I'm a staff and consultant surgeon, I work with cadavers frequently, but infrequently. I work with them maybe once every couple months. I'll get invited to teach a section of a course, maybe demonstrate a surgical procedure on a cadaver. And every time I do that, the tissue feels different. The, there's sometimes blood in the cadaver still, uh, even though there's been some embalming process. It, it, everything just feels uh, just not real to me. And I get sometimes a physiologic response, either some nausea or just feeling unwell, maybe, maybe almost uh, a feeling like I might, you know, uh, have uh, an episode of emesis. But I get over it. And I still participate in these courses because I know it adds value to the student. I can teach these other doctors or these future doctors a skill set that's really only possible on the cadaver. And so I continue to do it even though I get my own physiologic response. These experiences are normal. So if you're a medical student or someone who's interested in pursuing medicine, don't let the fear of fainting get in the way. Don't let the fear of maybe the sight of blood or sight of injuries or, or something like that get in the way of pursuing a medical career. There's so many opportunities and so many ways that you can contribute and experience these things and develop a skill to essentially avoid those, those unexpected responses. Thank you once again for watching. My name is Dr. Rich Hillsden. You've been watching my channel, Knife Skills. I appreciate every like, subscribe, and comment. If you've had any experiences like this, please share them in the comments below. I'd love to respond to them and I'd love to engage with you. That's really what this is all about for me. Have a great day.